Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. We want to bless God for yet another day. We just want to bless the name of the living God for this discussion on bitterness. We have defined bitterness as seed of resentment in the heart of man. It destroys a career and causes trouble for many. It destroys the one who is bitter and it causes trouble for many. Bitterness destroys relationships. It destroys institutions. It destroys nations. In fact, bitterness kills. Bitterness drains anointing. Bitterness will drain all your anointing. So we also look at symptoms of this malady of the heart called bitterness. And then we also said no one is born bitter. But bitterness is caused by offense. Offenses could be real or imaginary. We also said offense could be direct or indirect. Scripture says it is impossible that no offense should come. So by all means, something will happen that will cause a displeasure. So you cannot say, as for me, I will never offend anyone. Sometimes you need to set the record straight. If you want to be man pleaser, you may never be the servant of God. So that is what we have been discussing for the past weeks. And the fact that you should set record straight and you can never say, as for me, I will not offend anyone. We have been dealing with this for about two weeks now. Sometimes, it is good for one person to be sacrificed to save the many. That was how we ended last week. So today, my topic is simple. I know you can guess it. Yeah, we have been talking about the fact that you can never say I will not offend anyone. So my topic for today is that you can never say no one or nothing will offend me. You can never say that no one or nothing will offend me. You can never say. Let's begin from what Billy Graham said. Be attractive and winsome. But do not compromise your convictions for the sake of popularity. What that means is that sometimes you have to offend. By holding on to your conviction. But I want to say this evening. Be attractive and winsome. But it is not enough to insulate you from offense. You can be very careful. Yet you cannot control the other one for, from, from being careless. Be attractive and winsome. But it is not enough to insulate you from 
offense. Because the scripture says, it is impossible that no offense should not come. So by all means, something will happen that will not please you. Something will cause a transgression or a wrong. That which offends or causes displeasure is inevitable. My brothers and sisters, pay attention to this statement. Life is quite complicated. We do not always have control over it. Life it's quite complicated. We do not always have control over it. <laughs> not even the president of a nation. We do not always have control over it. We do not always get what we, we expected. Even what you work very hard for and it is deservedly yours you could still be robbed of it. You could still be robbed of it. Ecclesiastes 9, verse 11. We dealt with this scripture not quite long ago. But I want us to go back to it. This is the teacher, Solomon. Solomon. You have studied that which is under this earth. And as a great scientist, he has come to some conclusions. And this is one of them. I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift or the battle to the strong. Nor does food Come to the wise or wealth to the brilliant or favor to the learned. But time and chance happen to them all. I saw something else under the sun. I saw something else under the I have seen something else under the sun. The race is not to the swift. Why the race sometimes is not to the swift is something that needs interrogation. But this is life. You can work for it. But you may not have it. Just a slip. And then the swift loses the race. Then verse 12. I want us to understand the reality of life. So that we don't give room for bitterness. After all, you are not the only person living on the earth. A womb? Yeah. So what he has said, so you are not the only person living on the earth. You can't. I didn't know how person was seeing in Alpha. You can't have the whole space. You see, when God created two people, Adam and Eve. When you come on board, Nipa Beno, Adam and Eve. And then when he came around, and if Adam was saying certain things, now Oba and Ona, Adam, I can't see me. And God said, who? Who? Who told you? It means that a certain who has come around. <laughs> and and so during those days, there was a who. And now that we are 8 billion, you want to have all the space? Yeah. You can have all the space. It's better you understand life. So that you don't allow bitterness to, to, to disturb your spirit. Some can be very, very disturbing. Number 12. Moreover, 
No one knows when their hour will come. As fish are caught in a cruel net, or birds are taken in a snare, so people are trapped by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon them. And so, nipa nim nebre se empata we yi won aso bonimu ene enuma we yi won fidie muno sara ena we yi nipa ma ebre bonia e tu won empofrinu mu. Now you could be laughing in a moment and then you enter into the morning in the next step. This brother's is life. Sometimes you be attracted by evil times that fall unexpectedly upon us. May the Lord help us. May the Lord help us. Let me just remind you what I've, yet, I've said some couple of weeks back. That the world, this falling world is not fair. That not all the people will like you. Not all will understand you. So you cannot say no one will offend me. Not all will like you. Not all will understand you. Disappointment is a fact of life. Bad things happen to good people. This understanding of life is a good disposition for dealing with bitterness. This understanding of life. That no one would understand you. That no one will love you. It's a good disposition. For dealing with bitterness. What is dangerous brothers and sisters? And can be avoided. And should be avoided. It's not offenses. But bitterness. Offenses are not dangerous. Now it depends on how you handle it. And it is impossible that no offense would come. But what can be avoided? And what should be avoided? Is Bitterness. An offense developing into bitterness. But as for offenses, it is impossible that offenses should not come. Now, in this falling world and its corrupt social structures, it breeds evil and suffering. And it causes offenses. Now, the corrupt world structure, it breeds evil. And it causes offense. Now, this is not a black man's problem. It is a general problem. We there is no justice on the land. So if you are living in the midst of this world, falling world, don't say that no one will offend you. Nothing will offend me. The things will come. What the best you can do is to prevent the offense from developing into bitterness. Righteousness is a scarce commodity on earth. We live among in the midst of an evil world. And there are categories of evil. We have physical evil. Now, 
There are certain times there's famine. And to, nobody caused it. Famine. And natural disasters like earthquake, COVID, pestilence like COVID. This COVID will come and kill relatives, kill friends. And then sometimes you don't know whether you should be offended at God or offended at anything. This thing comes at us. Accidents, what we call accident. You may be driving well, but the other one that is careless will just claim lives or destroy your car. And when you come out of your car and you are, your vehicle is destroyed, you can't possibly say that, hey, hallelujah, how are you? You will be offended. You will be offended. You cannot just be, say that you will not offend anybody. Once your car is knocked, you come, you see your ugly car. So what? I bought this car just last year. You can't be saying that, hallelujah, hallelujah. You'll be offended. And that's why You'll be offended. It is impossible that offenses should, should not come. Moral and personal evil. So in this life, there are people who are morally evil. Now in the afternoon while we went to work or we went to church, these guys were sleeping. Because tonight they'll be going to work. Yeah. And they are going to work with machetes. They are going to work with guns. They are going to kill. They have collected some money. Contract killing. And they know that we are going to this house and they've told themselves, come what may. We are going to kill this man. As I speak, some people are outgoing to kill someone. Moral, if we live among them, armed robbers, we live among them. You cannot say nothing or nobody will offend you. And Children killing children. Now, This is moral evil. Okay. The social evil I spoke about it. The social structure that incarnates evil. Now we also have spiritual evil. The oppression of the demonic. Brothers, it is real. The Bible speaks of evil. And spiritual evil. Sometimes demons are cast off people and their sicknesses leave them straight away. Now we have the evil of the average human being cannot contend with such spirits. And they are described as spiritual wickedness in high places. This becomes worse, this kind of evil world. It becomes worse to, to worse to walk in when the activities of a people living in that particular generation is steeped in evil. Now, when you live in such an environment, you cannot say no one or nothing will cause my displeasure. Isaiah 59 from verse 12. Now, 
Ediunum Enkron if you knew Mudum Yazaya 59 12. For our offenses are many in your sight. Now, <laughs> God is up there in heaven, and everybody is causing trouble. <laughs> and we are causing him so much offense in his sight. And our sins testify against us. Our, our offenses are ever with us and we acknowledge our iniquities. Let's go to verse 4. 14, sorry. Now, so justice is driven back. Unrighteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Na wadani atimu eni na trini akujina echitri na nukre ashiasi idum na di etini intumi emem. So justice is driven back. There is no justice on the land. Enti atimu ya pamuno mo wajani atimu ni asa seno so. The, the other half of justice is what you call righteousness stands at a distance. Truth has stumbled in the streets. Honesty cannot enter. Truth is falling on the street and honest people do not have space. Verse 15 says this. Truth is nowhere to be found and whoever shuns evil becomes a prey. Is that true? No cray. I idea we are not now the opinion who everybody who know of form no fa. You lift righteousness at your workplace. What do you pay that any oh baby? Oh yeah you man you become a prey. When you are we will go after you. You probably show us what they really go after you. Be any better sound if you like try to set things straight. What do you but money yes it be a oh tent in normal you become a prey. This is the kind of life that we are living in. That is why we cannot control the, the evil of this world. But we can control people from perpetuating it. That is why we need to influence society and possess the nations. They understanding that in life, things that cause offense are bound to happen in itself is a safeguard to contracting a bitter malady of the heart. Now, can you lift up your hands and look at me? Pastor Joe Beecham has said there are issues everywhere. There are issues. There are troubles in family. There are troubles in marital line. Troubles among siblings. Issues at home. There are issues at the workplace. Issues everywhere. Issues in the church. So next week, I'll talk about offenses in church. Yeah. That is a more familiar environment for most of us. So that you, you can sleep in peace every night. <laughs> we will come to a point where my prayer is that we shall all sleep peacefully every night. Otherwise, <laughs> an evil spirit from God will enter you. And this is how Let's take life easy. Mama, you fabra bosse say neti. Let's enjoy it. Na mama ye ninye e wabra bo. The process and the con. Okay, ni abuaye ni ni muaye ni na. And don't take yourself too serious. Na wanka sanso shauye na wam fabra bono World Cup. Otherwise, you always be fighting. 
Because you cannot say no one will offend you. People will offend you. If you like, ask the Pen TV manager. The one who has been introducing me every day. Actually, if nobody has ever offended you. So if you like, ask me. <laughs> Somebody said, Oh, so you are going through all this and we always see you smiling. So what should I do? Obi Katra me say, and tea oh cause I no many name and a debia you must say usri. Now make us say head the anime. You want me to go about crying. Oh, I said Debia I know Eddie Chakra Mushi. As for offenses, it will come. And for me, the queen be as well. But what I have control over is my own heart. Nanya me to me as some who swan no eye. So that these offenses will not have negative effect on my heart. I'll see you next week. Send a bear sound from ye and for your dear be a wrap macumem. I send a messiah view. Namish Rao. Praise the Lord. Uh, want to rise to pray. Thy kingdom come, O God. O thy rule, O Christ. Break with thy iron rod, iron rod that tyrannies of sin. Thy kingdom come, O God. Thy kingdom.